Hello, people. Today I have with us the FT-00004A Azuma, and that is from the um, the video game Raiden 5. This one in particular is from the director's cut, as you saw on the box art um, on my video. So this one I built a little while ago, and I just, I'm finally getting to it. i um, been in the mood to review it for a while. It definitely hit a lot of high notes with building a traditional model. Um, as you know, I build a lot of snap model kits, and those are great. I love building my snap model kits. 30-minute um, missions, Gundam, the Frame Arms Girls, Frame Arms kits, they're great. I love them. But every once in a while, you get back to those old roots and you try to get something like that. Um, this one was built partially as a snap model, but you can definitely tell there are some hang-ups from the old style of building. This one is from Plum. Plum is Plum is quite prolific with their licensed kits. Um, the other one that I built from them is the R-Type R9A Arrowhead BLK version, so it's black. Uh, versus the regular version. That one needed a lot of help. That one was just a traditional model. You could not snap build that one and expect anything great. So let me go over what comes with this little thing. Oh, and it is 1-100 scale, which is very important to Gundam collectors such as myself. Um, that is a master grade type scale. So um, as you can see, it is highly detailed and part separated. I did not add any stickers, no decals, which it did come with. Uh, this is all parts color separation. So you get a nice gray, a nice white, two shades of red, but um, my camera is only showing it as one. You get that orange uh, transparent part. So there are quite a lot of details right out of the box. Um, the kit itself was very simple to build. You do definitely need to um, give it some love to bring out all those details. I didn't even panel line this one. I don't think it actually needs panel lining. Maybe, maybe some shading. I don't know. I, I haven't actually thought too much on what you're going to do to make this thing even more beautiful than it is right now. Uh, and as it is, it is quite lovely. Let me go ahead and pull this off of its stand which as you saw the stand is quite articulated which is very fun for a stand this is the underside uh, don't pay attention to the fact that that comes off rather easily you can glue that one i did not uh, these are the covers for the landing gear you have the port for the actual mount large engines it's just an incredible looking ship and i really fell in love with building it there's so much on it, it's crazy. Um, building the engines was actually really detailed. You can see inside there, let's see. You get multiple layered parts, made a really fun build. So, let me go ahead and switch, switch out the landing gear for you and I'll show you some more. All right, so there it is with the landing gear. I'm gonna go ahead and put my phone back on the stand. I will show you what that looks like from the underside. And so you see that it has the flaps open, um, the landing gear in, obviously need to touch that up for, with paint, but um, that is the plug for the holder, the stand. I'm not gonna push that down because I can I have a feeling that that's gonna be hell to take out. So I'm just gonna leave it like that and use something to pry it out when that's time. Um, building this guy was, like I said, very easy and very fun. I did use a lot of cement. Uh, the instructions are not in full color, but they are very detailed. So they give you all the information that you need to know. Um, very similar to Bandai's model kit instructions. And uh, it goes together pretty rapidly. As you see here, it does show, um, you know, when there's undergating, how to take care of that. Um, I mean, I'm showing you the most simple parts, but uh, really, it's not an overly complicated kit to build. Uh, 
there are a few pages and a few steps that were kind of hell, which are mainly the, the intakes for the engines. These here were very uh, difficult to put on because they are layered parts, not just one piece like uh, Bandai and Frame Arms likes to use. They are individual individual parts stacked on top of each other, which is why this one's separated and this one's nice and neat because I put those in on this side upside down. Oops. And uh, that made them, that made me need to take it apart so that I can uh, put it all back together again. Taking it apart wasn't fun because it had cemented them. <laughs> uh, but that said, that was my difficulty in reading the instructions because apparently I don't know how and um, that's just something that I did. Uh, the other thing that it includes is a very large decal sheet. You have tons of stuff to put on this thing to make it look legit including the nice lightning bolts for the um, tail fin and a lot of the white patterning that is missing on the wings here. So now what I wanted to do is show a size comparison compared to some of the kits that I normally compare to. So first off, we'll bring out the Gundam. This is the GBN frame Gundam, a GBN guard Gundam. Never going to get that ever right. And then I have it written down in front of me. So you see it's pretty big uh, in scale and universe. It would be um, a bit smaller because this one's 100. And that one's 144 but uh pretty cool there here's our Jinrai, who's a one one uh, one 100 skill kit and in universe that would be a very large jet <laughs> another one 144 scale let's go ahead and stand them up like i did with the gundam uh, knock the wing off this is actually a lot longer than the eximac is Going for the Gusto, this is the Alex Gundam. And they are about the same size in terms of length, which means that this thing is extraordinarily long, in my opinion, as they are both in 144, uh, 1 100 scale. Uh, you can see they are quite similar in size and scaling. But uh, um, give me one second, I have one more comparison to do. All right, so here we have the Gundam, we have the Azuma. This is a World War I gap tank. So it's between World War I and World War II. It is the um, T-35 tank from Russia. Uh, like I said, it's a gap period between World War I and World War II. I dropped the sprue. Um, this is a one 100 scale kit. So you see the length of that compared to that airplane. It's a pretty big airplane because that's a huge tank. I think um, scale wise, I think it's just a gigantic plane. I don't have any one 100 scale planes. I have 144s, but I don't have any one 100s. I'm going to have to change that. Uh, see if they actually make them. But uh, I think it's, it looks really cool beside this Master Great Gundam. It's a really fantastic looking plane. Ah, with some paint, man, it will look fantastic. So this is one that eventually I will have to do um, before I hang it up on the ceiling. Also, I need to finish um, cementing those wings back together. After I get the decals on, you know, paint it up with decals. That's what I'll do. So I'm going to take one more look at... The decal sheet I'll show you guys look at all these little things they're incredible just little details I love things like this is the cockpit um, display I don't I don't remember where those go but just all the little white lines little black lines I think that this is gonna look fantastic when it's all done up um, I haven't seen any that have been done up but um, I don't think it would be a very difficult job to just put some, I mean, just a coat of red paint and then to color it up, it'll look fantastic. 
so yeah i think that's all for today like i said um this is really cool one to have put together it went together a lot faster than i thought it would because you know i was thinking oh i'm gonna have to sand everything together and fit everything together properly it didn't take a lot of work the the adjustments on this thing they're quite nice everything on there is really cool um so i'm gonna put i'm gonna put this one on a must buy list because definitely one that you need if you ever played video games this one's an arcade game it's quite popular um you can play it on your home console as well in a 1 100 scale so it works with your gundam uh, you saw it looks pretty good with your alto so if you're into 30 minute missions it's a pretty cool one to look at. i mean it's definitely science fiction looking it doesn't look like a real plane but um i mean there are similar features and it goes the wing again i mean from the nose back forget it but from the nose up or from the um cockpit up yeah that's definitely a real cool looking plane i love this thing and i want the blue one now because those are the two iconic ones uh, fix that wing, <laughs> but I would definitely say buy it if you have it nearby you. It's one for your shelf, man. It's definitely a cool one. You will love it. All right, friends, that is all for today. Um, I hope to see you guys next time or you'll see me, but more than likely that you'll see my stuff and you have a good one. Bye-bye.